So, I'm 51, and my wife is 45. We've been married for a whopping 25 years. Imagine that. We're farmers, living the farm life right here in the Midwest. Got two kids. Our daughter's 18 and just stepped into college. Now the sad part is our son left us five years ago. He would have hit the big 2-0 if he was still with us today. Here's a little backstory. I met my wife when I started working for my farming grandparents. Picture this. They're all about cattle and growing crops like corn and wheat. Now, my wife. She's not your average gal. She's got this amazing blonde hair, keeps herself fit, and doesn't mind getting a bit dirty working on the farm. Animals? She's their guardian and farm tools. She knows them like the back of her hand. I was a simple country boy, and she caught my eye with her toughness and charm. We started dating when she was 19, and things just clicked. But life took a turn. Our son's no longer with us, and around that time, her granddad's health was fading, and her grandma had memory issues. Suddenly I found myself taking charge of the family as her dad wasn't into the farming lifestyle. Back then, we had a 15-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter in the family. My wife's grandparents passed away, and the farm became hers. Things were going fine, especially since our son was a natural at farming, just like us. He had loads of potential, always taking charge on the farm without needing help. But then, something really sad happened. One day, while driving on I-95, a huge truck lost control and crashed into his truck. He didn't make it and it hit us hard. My wife, she took it the hardest, struggling with his absence. After the funeral something changed in her. It was like she turned into a different person, not the one we knew. She stopped being active on the farm, and spent whole days in bed, battling anxiety. Her attachment to us became overwhelming, making it tough for me to even go to work or take care of our daughter. Her vibe became negative, totally opposite to how she used to be. At night, Getting personal space in bed was a challenge. She wanted to cuddle all night, but it was so tight, I could hardly breathe. It felt like being held in a super tight grip, even after she seemed to sleep. She needed kisses every hour, unlike before our son's accident. Our intimate life changed too. We used to be together a few times a week, but after our son's passing, it became almost every day, even during our grief. I started noticing that my wife's need for closeness was her way of dealing with the pain. She became more attached than ever before. And sometimes, I didn't really feel like doing the things she wanted. When I tried to express my hesitation, she didn't pay much attention. It seemed like she wanted it so badly that I didn't want to upset her by saying no. In those moments, it felt like we only did things she liked. And I didn't get a chance to voice what I wanted. Our intimate moments started feeling more about fulfilling her needs than sharing love between us. I began to wonder if these actions were more for her happiness and coping than an expression of our love. She often got upset over small things, turning almost everything into an argument. Sometimes, she'd raise her voice about the farm or get angry with our workers. Around that time, there was a 14-year-old boy helping us. His parents were not great, dealing with their own problems. I thought about adopting him, considering his tough situation. Surprisingly, my wife disagreed strongly, but as time went on, she started liking him, saying he reminded her of our son. About a year later, things changed. The boy, now 15, played a big role in improving my wife's condition. They developed a close relationship, and my wife suggested we formally adopt him. Once we did, the atmosphere at home changed for the better. My wife's mood improved a lot. I started noticing they were becoming extremely close, having late-night conversations after I'd gone to bed. So, my wife used to come to bed much later than usual, wondering why I turn in early. Well, my days start before sunrise. First thing in the morning, I head out to the barn to take care of the cattle. Making sure they have enough food and water is crucial for their health. I also check them for any signs of illness and provide necessary medications. <laughs> Once the cattle are sorted, I move to the field where we grow corn. During planting season, I'm busy preparing the soil and planting corn seeds with my adopted son. When the corn is growing, my job is to monitor its progress, ensuring it gets the right water and nutrients. I might use irrigation and fertilizer and keep an eye out for pests or diseases. Depending on the time of year I have different tasks, like gathering the harvest with the help of my adopted son and some hired hands. Initially, 
I wasn't bothered by the closeness of my wife and adopted son, as my daughter spent time with them too. Two years after our son passed away, things seemed to be getting back to normal. Although we lost our son, his memory stayed with me every day. Strangely, my wife formed a strong attachment to our adopted son, and they'd watch TV together under a blanket, a regular sight that didn't seem odd to me. Our intimate life changed, happening about once every two weeks. It didn't bother me much, as I felt I was getting too old for frequent bedroom activities, especially after a long day's work. Both my adopted son and I spent a good part of our day tending to the cattle and managing the cornfields. And of course my wife and daughter took care of administrative duties. So, part of my responsibilities includes keeping track of expenses, maintaining records for the cattle and corn, and handling paperwork related to regulations and sales. There was this one day that made me a bit suspicious about my wife's behavior with our adopted son. I couldn't find him so I went looking around. We had a separate barn with our office, and my wife spent most of her time there. Walking toward the office, I saw his dirty shoes outside the door, suggesting he was inside. Since the office door couldn't lock from the inside, I opened it, and it seemed like I interrupted something between my wife and our adopted son. There was a brief moment of unexpected expression, but at the time, I didn't think much about it. Fast forward three years, our daughter turned 18 and headed off to college. At home, it was mainly just me, our adopted son, and my wife. During harvesting season, we had extra hands on the farm. After a hard day's work we'd usually head to the bar for a drink. However, since my adopted son was only 19, not of legal drinking age, he'd go into the house early. As the day was winding down I told the other workers to go ahead without me as I needed to finish a few tasks. I wanted to check on the cattle and make sure all equipment was stored properly. Then, for some reason, I felt the urge to go to the office and let my wife know I was leaving. This was unusual since it was our routine to go out after a busy day of harvesting. As I turned the doorknob and opened the door, a sense of discomfort settled in my stomach. It was an odd feeling, like something wasn't quite right. When the door swung open I saw my wife, the person I always trusted the most, in the midst of it all, on her knees performing oral acts with our adopted son. My heart raced inside my chest the feeling of shock and disbelief hitting me like a sudden wave. It was as if my mind was struggling to make sense of what I was witnessing. All at once I felt a surge of anger, hurt and an intense feeling of being let down. And this emotion seemed to swirl together in a confused mix that almost made me feel numb. I couldn't control it. My hands tightening to fist and my breath became deeper and heavier. As if a surge of energy was rushing through me making me feel a bit dizzy. For a brief moment I felt like I was suspended, detached from what was happening around me. The room itself appeared hazy at the edge. As if my vision had narrowed down to a distressing scene right before me. At first I had this strong urge to shout, to ask for some explanation, and to let out all the feelings that were causing turmoil within me. However, there were also a part of me that wished to look away, to reject what my eyes were seeing, and to somehow believe that it wasn't actually happening. As the second passed it became clear that I couldn't avoid dealing with what was happening. The understanding hit me like a force, pulling me out of my initial stunned state and pushing me toward a more resolute mindset. Tears wailed up in my eyes a blend of sadness and frustration ready to break free. My voice quivered as I summoned the courage to speak. My question carried a sense of openness and vulnerability that I hadn't felt in a long time. What's happening? My adopted son couldn't meet my gaze directly. I could see a blend of guilt and surprise, playing across his face. My wife shifted her attention towards me. There was shame, regret, an unusual touch of defiance present in her eyes. A thick silence settled in the air the only sound breaking it being the rhythm of my own breath. Right then, it hit me like a brick. Something had shifted. The solid base of trust that our relationship stood on had crumbled, and there was no way to undo it. The feelings of betrayal hit me hard from both my wife and adopted son. Anger overwhelmed me, and I grabbed him by the neck, pulling him out of the room. My wife screamed as I warned him that he'd face harm if he ever returned. With those words I walked away leaving behind a storm of pain and confusion. Amidst this emotional chaos I headed to the bar, seeking the company of friends to temporarily forget the shocking scene. Being alone was the last thing I wanted, but it was hard to escape the weight of what had unfolded. At the bar I tried to drown out the thoughts, but the situation's magnitude was immense. Questions echoed in my mind, wondering how long this had been happening. 
We adopted him at 14 and he's almost 19 now. But who could say for sure when it all began? The noise in my head became overwhelming, and I decided to head home early. There. My wife was nowhere to be seen, and my adopted son had left. The weight of the situation hit me, and tears flowed. The impact of my son's passing and my wife's destructive choices became painfully clear. I found my daughter and shared the disturbing scene with her. Surprisingly, she wasn't shocked, suspecting something unusual between them. Contrasting my daughter's readiness to address the situation, my wife, showing cowardice, refused to come home for months, avoiding communication. When my daughter reached out, my wife initially claimed it was a mistake, but later confessed her romantic feelings for our adopted son. She expressed fear about my reaction to this revelation. My daughter told me that my wife and our adopted son were still at a hotel, but my wife hadn't revealed the location. I felt profoundly confused. Despite dedicating my life to managing the farm, legally owned by my wife from her grandparents, the sense of betrayal was overwhelming, leaving me feeling lost and uncertain. Checking our business account, I discovered a significant amount of money had been withdrawn. In response, I withdrew the remaining funds and set up a new business account to prevent her access. The weight of the situation left me deeply conflicted. I had envisioned retiring on the farm but now faced a dilemma. Filing for divorce meant losing everything I'd invested in. Even though I had enough savings to sustain myself until 80, my genuine passion for what I did made the decision difficult. Consulting a divorce lawyer, I sought advice on whether to continue with the marriage. The lawyer advised staying married due to potential significant losses. Concerned about our small community and limited family connections, I hesitated to make this matter public. My daughter's support meant the world to me, reassuring to have her by my side. After about two months, my wife unexpectedly called. She expressed a desire to return home, apologize and shared undergoing therapy to repair our marriage. Troubling thoughts of immediate divorce were strong but potential losses held me back. I'll. The moment I caught her, all love and respect vanished, and dark thoughts crossed my mind. The idea of having her back was almost unbearable, but for the memory of my late son I pushed those dark thoughts away. Currently, my plan is to permit my wife to return but things have significantly shifted since I caught her. I've made a plan to get my own land and start my own cattle herd. I understand the intricate logistics, customer relations and the supply chain. While she used to contribute, I've been building wealth for her. Now, my focus is on my well-being. I'm working towards my own endeavors, ready in the next two years, aiming for independence from her influence. Ultimately, my goal is to be prepared for a divorce by then if she's still alive. This decision is about my future. Finding a way to move forward independently. Thanks for sticking with me through this. Support the channel by liking and subscribing if you haven't. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.